Did you know that some of the scariest monsters from myth just symbolise the unknown? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video in honour of Halloween and the spooky season, we're going to have a look at some of the monsters from ancient mythologies and folklore. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation. We're now on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the link in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Monsters and creatures from legend and mythology are understood as personifications of the unknown, explanations for natural events or misfortune, or serve to encourage cultural values or prevent unwanted or dangerous behaviour. Any legend or myth from any culture always serves some purpose, even if, on the surface, it seems to be just an entertaining tale. The spooky season of the year from late August to December was, and still is, when ghost stories and other supernatural tales were told. And so, here are a few figures from the dark side of mythology and legend you can worry your friends and family with. Monsters as forces of chaos are popular figures in world mythology. There are far too many to cover today, but here's a taste of some of the best known or most terrifying that exemplify the central concept of an entity that upsets order, disappoints expectation, and threatens the innocent and unsuspecting. The Pazuzu is an Assyrian and Babylonian demon. It's depicted as a humanoid with a canine face, bulging eyes, scaly skin, talons, large wings, and a penis with a snake's head. He's best known as the demon from the 1973 film The Exorcist, who possesses a young girl. But Pazuzu isn't actually evil, he's just destructive. He can cause famine, flood, and disease as a chaotic force who brings personal or communal pain, loss, and death. But because he knows forces of darkness so well, he was often called upon for protection from them, which he granted if he felt like it. The owl, on the other hand, offered nothing to humanity but terror. The owl from ancient Persia was a nocturnal spirit who entered their house invisibly and then assumed the form of an old woman, with long stringy hair, sharp teeth and talons who preyed on pregnant women and newborns. Infant deaths and those of women in childbirth were blamed on the owl, who were the nighttime subgroup of a larger set of demons who instilled fear and uncertainty in the form of spiders, stinging insects, rodents who devoured crops, and beasts who fed on people. Given antiquity's high mortality rates, both during childbirth and in early childhood, this story is not a surprising explanation. These Japanese demons cause mischief and disaster and are generally without morals although some oni can be good or serve a higher purpose. They have a red or green body with the head of a horse or ox and horns. Some oni dwell in the underworld, where they ride a flaming chariot, patrol hell with iron clubs, and punish sinners. They are most famously depicted with these clubs, but are also well known for their swordsmanship. Although they are known for punishing the wicked, they are generally a disruptive force that ruins plans, upsets expectation, and wounds or kills the innocent. Scylla and Charybdis are two ancient Greek monsters believed to inhabit the Straits of Messina. Charybdis, the daughter of Gaia and Poseidon, was thrown there after Zeus struck her with a lightning bolt, potentially because of her lustful character. Charybdis is described as a giant whirlpool that sucked in and blew out water three times a day with such force that even Poseidon couldn't save a ship pulled into her depths. In Homer's Odyssey, Charybdis destroyed Odysseus's ship on his way home from the Trojan War. Across from Charybdis dwelt Scylla, the sea nymph turned monster. She was turned into a monster with 12 legs and 6 heads, each with 3 rows of teeth. She inhabited a cave across from Charybdis and would prey on unsuspecting sea life and men if they dared come her way. 
These two are thought to have personified the dangers of sea travel, but have come to be referenced in the phrase caught between Scylla and Charybdis, meaning having to choose between two equally unpleasant options. The Harpies, on the other hand, tried to eliminate one's choice entirely by forcing themselves onto people. Their name means snatchers or grabbers, and they were the spirits of destructive winds and sudden sharp gusts. The Harpies were two or three monstrous deities, depending on the source, with the faces of maidens, winged bodies, clawed hands, and pallid faces from starvation. They are known from the Odyssey as the singing personification of the winds that try to lure Odysseus's ships off course but they are best known from the story of King Phineas of Thrace. Zeus sent the Harpies as a punishment for Phineas. Plates of food would be prepared for Phineas, then the Harpies would swoop in and eat most of it up, with what was left smelling too horrible to be eaten. When the Argonauts came through, Phineas asked for aid in getting rid of the Harpies. The Argonauts agreed, and when the Harpies descended on the food that was left out, Zetes and Calais, the sons of the north wind Boreas, chased them away, brandishing swords. They were thought to have symbolised the destructive aspect of nature, but the term today is often applied to unpleasant women generally. Speaking of unpleasant, we have the Manticore. The Manticore is a fearsome Persian monster with the head of a man, body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion, and its name means a man-eater, which is very fitting. Believed to be the fastest thing on Earth, it has a thick hide which makes it invincible. It could kill anything except elephants, and enjoyed eating humans, not leaving anything behind except maybe a splatter of blood. It would lurk in long, uncultivated grasses away from cities and towns, and the only way you knew it was approaching was its growl that sounded like a loud trumpet. The manticore was the reason given if someone went missing in a town or community and no one knew why. It served the purpose of not only explaining mysterious disappearances, but scaring young people into staying within the safety of their town or village. No one was safe from Fenrir, Jormunganda, or Hell, however. In Norse mythology, these three are personifications of chaos, destruction, and death, and are the children of the trickster god Loki, all imprisoned by the gods of Asgard after it was prophesied that they would cause some trouble. Fenrir was bound to a rock on an island, Jormunganda was hurled into the sea, and Hell was sent down to the lowest of the Nine Realms to preside over the souls of the dead. Eventually, Loki also was imprisoned by the gods, but at the end of time, Ragnarok, all would break free to meet the gods in battle. The gods would mostly be killed, but would triumph over the forces of chaos. This Scottish shape-shifting water demon is known in other cultures by different names, like the Kalupalik, Shui Gui, and the Bunyip. The basic function of the water demon is to scare children into staying away from bodies of water to keep them safe. The Kelpie lures children towards water as a beautiful horse, who then drowns and eats them. This is typical of the water demon figure around the world, and one of the most famous is La Llorona of Central America, the spirit of a woman who drowned her children and snatches children she finds near water to drown them too. Spirits like La Llorona appear in a number of different cultures, and ghosts generally feature in the beliefs of virtually every world civilization, and their appearance is never thought to be a good sign. A ghost usually showed up when the deceased person felt that proper funerary rites had not been observed, or their last wishes had not been honoured. When this happened in ancient Egypt, the person who was haunted would write a letter to the deceased, addressing the problem and asking to be left alone. In Rome, a loved one's ghost might appear in a dream, with a message that might bring important news, like the identity of their killer. But an apparition that appeared between dusk and dawn, not in a dream, was a bad sign. In China, ghosts followed this same model, but were mainly feared, and precautions were taken to ward them off. The Chinese believed ghosts could only walk in straight lines, and so roads were designed to curve so they could not follow a person home. Bells were thought to scare ghosts off, and dogs were known as supernatural protectors. So, bells were attached to dogs, and these bells were then put on children, so the ghosts would think they were dogs and leave them alone. 
Witches also feature in almost every ancient culture and originally were forces for good, usually known as seeresses, who could predict the future, confer with the dead to resolve problems, and offer healing herbs and spells. In the Bible, the famous witch of Endor raises the spirit of the prophet Samuel at King Saul's request and is not depicted as doing wrong. Saul is the wrongdoer for asking her to raise the spirit instead of trusting in God. After the rise of Christianity, however, witches were regarded as co-workers with Satan and seen as evil figures. One of the most infamous is the Slavic witch Baba Yaga, a cannibal who preys on children and lives in a hut raised on chicken's legs that swirls constantly in a forest glen. She is depicted as a huge ogress with enormous eyes that frees one with fear and large fangs and shares many similarities with the figure of the vampire. Many monsters in history and from different cultures share some characteristics of the modern vampire, including the Empusa and Lamia from ancient Greece, demonic creatures that would take the form of beautiful women, seduce young men and lure them to their beds to feed on their blood and flesh, and the Vitalas from India, which were spirits neither immortal nor human that would inhabit corpses. There is the vampiric witch known as the Striga from Albania, which would live by drinking the blood of infants and children while they slept, and the Bavansi, who took the form of beautiful women and could be found in the countryside, forests, and lonely outdoor areas, ready to seduce their victims, who were often young men, and then drink their blood. Unlike the modern vampires who used their fangs to feed, the Bavansi had sharp, long fingernails, which they used to slash the necks of their victims. The vampire, like other supernatural creatures, basically symbolised the dangers of the unknown, embodying the fears people had over life's uncertainties. Do you have a favourite monster from history or folklore that we didn't mention in this video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more over at apricusclothing.ca or you can find the link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.